It's time once again for Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. As I said, this is the visual storytelling show, so we talk about telling stories with pictures, telling stories with images, writing with images, comics, after all, because they are pretty great. So, um, speaking of great, we got Tony Cliff on the show. <laughs> 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 I, I looked Paul's story in the eye as I said, speaking of great, mode of anticipation. You know the worst part, though? I was like, oh, so he's going to segue <laughs> over to Tony right away. <laughs> I, know, I know your wiles. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I think it's your sense of self-loathing. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that you said that. <laughs> I hate me that you said that. Oh, man. I, I got I to gotta stop laughing. Uh, so we've got Tony Cliff on the show. Tony Cliff of Deliladirk.com. Um... We're gonna, can look, I can I just say yes. can I just say as somebody who listens to a lot of podcasts during their work day, it's nice to hear a little laughter. Is it okay? Oh, well, that's good. Okay, good. I'm glad it doesn't annoy you at least. <laughs> so at least lean back though. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, observe my that, mic technique. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm trying to do now. Is like yeah. when I laugh. Whoa! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like wow. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, Tony of DelilahDirk.com, let's introduce you to the audience. We don't need to introduce Paul because Paul's been on, what is this, your fourth or fifth time? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the fact that in, in your email prep you said, you've been on like three times. <laughs> it's been like, I, I, I couldn't remember. I just figured like it was more than two. I'll just put, I'll just do put like three. the watership down and I just put higher. You know, yeah. the meeting yeah. <laughs> many. Weren't we talking about Tony? Yes, we were talking about Tony. Yeah, Thank you go. for that. So, uh, to Tony. Um, Guys, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, my God. <laughs> we, actually, you've gotten in yourself into a, a live cast uh, fan club is what you've gotten yeah. yourself into. Yeah. So I was introduced to your comic by Dave Roman of yatime.com. He yeah, actually. Tom. He mentioned uh, Delilah Dirk month, months ago on uh, the, the, show, the show, as a matter of fact. And, and uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to do my best to describe it, then I'll let you do your pitch for it. Uh, man, as I was reading this book, or comic, online comic, uh, I got a sense of this is Indiana Jones meets Lupin the Third. Does that sound fair? <laughs> you forgot the history. The, the you need to throw it back a little bit, though. A little the further. Historical bat well, yeah, but I just meant like in terms of, like the high adventure, explosions, crazy fighting, and a hero who is just this uh, uh, unflappable, uh, capable person who could do anything. And, uh, and the, often does. And often does. Yeah. Uh, the Indiana Jones aspect in terms of there's a lot of killing in it, but it's, it's – it's, uh, how do you describe that kind of like violence? Is there a lot of killing in Indiana Jones? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other night. Yeah, a little bit, but it's not. It's not like. Uh, I mean, if you compared it to say a video game, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I can, I can, I can agree with you maybe a little bit. Uh, I haven't. Uh, internet, don't get mad at me. I haven't seen Lupin the Third. No. Oh, oh, oh! It's uh, well, I'm, I'm familiar with it a little bit, but uh, not extensively. I'm well, Lupin the Third is yeah. He sees a, uh, a it's a group of thieves, international thieves, and they wind up. Uh, and this is where like the there's a departure because I mean we're not that far into into Delilah Dirk yet, so I don't know if you're, if you're headed in this direction. But uh, it always starts out with Lupin wanting to steal something from somebody. He gets in, entrenched in an even darker, more evil kind of conspiracy or <laughs> plot, and then he has to fix the situation meanwhile while uh, trying to escape Inspector Zanagata who's always chasing him but it's a lot of like madcap running on rooftops um, really really great character dynamics like Lupin, Jigen, and Goemon you've, you've seen or read some of these books right? Yes? No? I will say yes because my voice my my friend Sonny Strait does the voice of Lupin the Third now oh really? so I will say yes <laughs> I, I love it with the loopening and the wait, is the, this a uh, is this a continuing? What is it? Is it's a, I thought it was a movie from the eighties. Oh no, no, no. no. it's a, it was a series of manga put out in the sixties by uh, oh. an artist by, known as Monkey Punch, and his, his early <laughs> stuff. That's what the name he goes by. And his early stuff looked very Kurtzman esque when you look at that. Like the I think Tokyo Pop years ago put out a big collection of all the old stuff. Uh, these days it looks a lot different, but it has like that kind of like uh, really. A static energy to it that uh, Delilah Dirk has, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, you know what, Delilah Dirk for 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 geeky types, um, mm -hmm. it is like if you took um, River Song from Doctor Who and and popped her back into uh, into the uh, oh what was it the, the mid uh, mid to late eighteen hundreds right. Right? Yeah, late yeah. 1800s. 18, 1800s. Um, and she just, it, it, she's got that, that just 
kind of raw madcap energy and um and I particularly like you know her her current sidekick. I don't know if you're going to you know keep the lieutenant there. You know, well, the title but, of the book is called Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant. Well, so. yes, but there might be then a new companion, if you will, oh. for the next story arc. But I just, I, I just love the, the the energy and the inventiveness and um, the the lush uh, uh, colors. Let, and, let's, and, let, let, yeah. let's introduce people to the plot real quick too. So, okay. what's the general plot of this thing? The the the, the premise. Uh, the tur- the Turkish Lieutenant is. Um, <laughs> I'm bad at summarizing these things. The Turkish <laughs> lieutenant is uh, basically a story of a lieutenant in uh, the Janissary army, sort of reluctant lieutenant. Uh, he just wants to lead a quiet life. Um, he sort of enjoys his tea. He's very good at making his tea. And then uh, during the course of his duties, um, this like brash adventurous swings into his life. First, she, <laughs> first she inadvertently but effectively effectively um uh what it, what do you say um you know causes his execution or calls not calls for his execution but it's his fault that he's to be executed and then she saves his life and so now he is stuck with the dilemma of how do i repay this person um and having to adopt to a <laughs> much more adventurous lifestyle than he was previously used to. Yes. And that is Delilah Dirk in a nutshell so far. And I'll, 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 I was going to segue into talking about building premises because I think there's a dynamite premise. But uh, And we but don't need to talk about anything I've ever done. That's I was going to say. I'm going to <laughs> hold back on that so that we can go to Mr. Guilt Trip here. Uh, almost like a brother to me. He guilt trips me so much. Mr. Paul Story. Do you have a brother? So, I, there's seven kids in my family. Are they are are there some of them also boys? Yes, I have uh, three. Notice, by the way, I I was generous and four said bro- also boys. Four, <laughs> thank you. Four brothers. Four yeah. brothers, two sisters. Huge <laughs> brood. Huge brood. Yeah. Like, we're like yeah. the Borg. Uh, so yes, Paul's story of story. <laughs> and I've been assimilated now. So yes, because because you you try to make me feel bad. So you must be a member of my family. <laughs> <laughs> Your family and my family should get together and go bowling. <laughs> hey, let's do it. Are you going to roll that ball or what? You know. That, so, okay. So, Paul's story of storyville.com. Uh, fifth time on the show. Sixth time on the show. Who knows anymore? It, it doesn't just, matter. We yes. lost count. Uh, you know, we're... We, we're we're artistic types. We don't do well with numbers. You know, la- last <laughs> last week's show went really fast. It just like felt like it blasted by, and yeah. I thought, you know, I need to really feel like I'm enjoying and drinking in and experiencing the show slowly. And I thought of the book Catch Twenty Two, where there was that character who just laid in bed all the time because the the, the the more boring his life was, the slower life would seem to go by. And I thought, Paul, I got to get yeah. him on the show. So okay, Paul's story. Uh, he uh, you brought the Green Hornet case files here. I did bring the Green Hornet case files again because I, I I know I talked it up a little bit. It's actually not comics though it's this is prose comics. it is a prose words uh, oh, collection geez, I don't know about that. um but uh but you know featuring a, a character who has been uh, repeatedly uh, brought back to the comics world i don't want to go down too big of a, a you know a tributary side winding yeah. trail but uh, what did you think of that green hornet movie with? i just saw it for the first time is it okay I, i'm really disappointed because there was actually a movie underneath what they released. <laughs> it was like, wow, that could have been good. It was like that close, really that close to being, yeah, you know. but then they just had to ham it up too much and and just, you know. Did anybody pass gas in the movie? I, well, he's got a gas gun. I think he, he actually. Oh, you know re- what I mean. No, no, no I think he actually referred to it as a fart gun oh, at one point. See, there you go. That's yeah. when you know you've crossed that line yeah. when somebody makes that yeah. joke, you know. It's just, eh, you know. I, yeah. it, it was, but it was, I was watching it going, oh, it's so close. It's like so close to being okay. So it, so it gets a uh, three out of five? From the Paul story, yeah, okay, rating. okay, yeah. So then you got the Muse here, the Muse, which is uh, due out actually uh, in December, so uh, should be in the next few weeks. So it's too late to pre-order it from Diamond. Um, no, you can get uh, your retailer can do an advance reorder. Oh, so yeah. go, to your, go to your retailer <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So anything else that you wanted to promote? You you wrote you write a lot of stuff. You also wrote Gotham Girls. I did write Gotham Girls. And hello. Um, so, and uh, Paul, I can see, Paul, I can see that you, uh, <clears throat> you you have these both on your website. Is there any way anybody can take a look at a preview um, of the Muse? 
of either. I'm looking at both of them right okay. now. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have a preview of uh, Green Hornet, but I should actually get a preview of the Muse up on my website. I know that they did uh, – I, I don't have all the pages. That's one of the problems with when you work uh, with a publisher. I'm not saying it's a problem of the publisher, but <laughs> I'm just saying you don't always, you know, end up with uh, with enough stuff to put 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 up previews. But that's a good that's a good idea. I should do that. Thank you, Tony. Well, try, try before you buy. Yeah, that's always a yeah. good idea. Yeah. And that's what Tony does with delightlyderick.com. It's all there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that'd be pretty cool. I could do like a five, maybe a five page preview. I, I think that's you what can do I'm an all page preview and just trust your readers to actually bur- purchase the book. Uh, I I am not uh, the publisher on that, so I really have to go by the publisher's. Well, why don't desire. you ex- exercise a little bit of that Paul Story strength, some of that star power that you got to <laughs> <laughs> leverage it? Uh, he's also Storyville on the Twitters. I, I didn't mention Tony, and, and you could follow him on Twitter to find out that you've been uh, doing a little bit of the power walking. Life I, begins I at sixty. <laughs> Oh, good. I've got a few years before my life begins. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, how's, how's that go? I mean, because, you know, exercise, this is a sedentary lifestyle, it man. It really is. It really is. And you know what? I, I, um, I've been feeling better. And, uh, you know, I, I'm also incredibly lazy. So I, I pop the, uh, I pop the uh, treadmill down in front of the television. Oh, I thought you were – because I was going to ask, where do you go in downtown Detroit with all the, you know, the I, monsters I, and fire I, pits? Yeah. Un- unfortunately, I don't live in downtown Detroit, Jersey. Oh, that's the way you always make it sound. No, that's the way you always make it sound. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, and I, I got a little bit of inspiration because uh, artist uh, Colleen Duran was talking about how – she set up uh, a uh, treadmill right next to her drawing board, so she could hop up and put in a few minutes, you know, from time to time. Um, mm. Because yeah, it is good to get up and and move around a little bit, get the blood flowing. Have you guys uh, have you guys talked at all about like standing desks or tried standing? That's like desks a hot all? topic now, isn't it? Everybody's talking about standing desks. Can all you of use the words hot topic? Is or do you have to? Oh, pay? they don't exist anymore. Now oh, they're Spencer's good. gifts. So yeah. It's 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 a, a topic that is being widely discussed amongst our ilk. Yeah. Is a standing desk thing. Have you ever tried it, Tony? Uh, I have not, but uh, yeah, I've I've heard the buzz over the last uh, few months or so. But you're you're like an obscenely good-looking guy, so I don't think you need to worry about all that health stuff just right, yet. I if, <laughs> you will get me started. You will get me started. This is funny because this is a conversation I had with uh, Dave Roman and uh, Raina Telgemeier, uh, and anybody else who will listen um, is about yoga. Ooh, um, yoga! You see wait, yoga. Don't, don't don't put you don't don't put the don't put the defenses up yet. Okay. Um, I I was just going for the easy joke. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mean you mean you don't try hard at your jokes? Who knew? <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. I'm sorry. Um, I will uh, I will I will suggest to anybody who's in this line of work. Or animation, or anything else, anything else where you're sitting in front of the desk all the time. Uh, if you're having trouble with your back, you have got to look into yoga. Yeah. Mm. So um, you do, you do do yoga then. You do the hot <laughs> yoga. Well, I, I will give you, I will give you this anecdotal evidence. Okay. I would say that uh, I had recurring back problems for a while, um, working in animation and working on the comics, uh, especially with the Cintiq. A Cintiq puts you in. Some weird desk positions with your shoulder, one shoulder up, one shoulder down, blah, blah, blah. Um, I started doing yoga, and I'm not going to say that my problems never came back or anything, but uh, it really helped. And if anything did show up, it went away pretty quickly. Um, I stopped doing it two, about two months ago. Uh, just because my schedule shifted and my workplace shifted and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, the other week, I had some crippling back pain. Oh, so, wow. uh, at least for me, at least for me, it seems to have been been working. So, well, I I, I think don't recommend yoga to anybody. Don't don't you think a part of that is because um, we tend to be in a single position, and then the yoga also, in addition to all like the strength benefits or the endurance benefits, there's a lot of stretching, and stretching in directions that we don't normally, you know, because mm-hmm. we usually get the hunch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You no, know, what Tony just... was describing with the shoulder thing is yeah. something that I, I struggle with a lot. I mean, when I, I don't have a Cintiq, but I've got a tablet. And so this hand is hunched over 
you know, my, my keyboard doing my key commands and this hand is up here like this. And so this shoulder gets torn up really bad right underneath the shoulder blade. And so, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, I used to run into that with my mouse sometimes. If I was using the mouse a lot, mm -hmm. I would get that like just – it's like how did it get to be under the shoulder blade? There's like this yeah. knot <laughs> yeah. of muscle. And it, and it feels like it's end. burning. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I like how you had to say, like, don't put up your defenses yet. But, yeah, yeah. no, actually, I'm, I'm in full agreement with you on that, whether it's Pilates or yoga, something that involves stretching of yeah. some kind. Yeah. Uh, I used to do yoga, yeah. uh, lightning posture and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <it's just laughs> but anyway. I, I, I did a little bit of yoga associated with, uh, with like a, uh, an exercise program on DVD. Mm. I don't know if I should mention Power 90 because, you know, they may, they don't advertise on Power 90? Yeah. What's that? Is that, it's a, is that the same as P90X that I keep hearing about? Uh, P90X is like the more intense version that they came up with to get more money out of people. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking Jersey, about. Jersey, is this the direction you want to <laughs> No, it's not. Thank you. So, but, <laughs> but we were talking about how good looking you are. And, th and that's yeah. another thing that just, it just ticks me off. Is that, okay, great art, great comic. Uh, really nice guy. Andy's good looking too. That's always brutal to, to run up against but he, that. But he is indulging in the Canadian uh, uh, stereotype by oh. wearing plaid. Oh, is is that a stereotype? Well, and, and we're it's, all lumberjacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Maybe, maybe that's the source of my back problems. Is that uh, yes. Damn trees. Uh, uh, but but okay, so going back. You know what? I, I actually we were talking about you were talking about standing desks and my walking regimen. Yeah. Um, I saw. Uh, John Lehman, who writes the awesome Chew comic, uh -huh. um, talking about he put uh, like a desk across his treadmill. And, I was wondering and about put that. his laptop on it and like writes while he walks. I would die. I would like. <laughs> I am not that coordinated. I don't know if he maybe goes at a lower speed than than I've been doing. What if you wore one of those boxer mouth guards? <laughs> I, think, I think I would need to be wrapped in bubble wrap. <laughs> Because I would like, like get like get wrapped up and then just go sliding off okay. the back of it. The... Can we I'm talk? Sure, about... I'm sure you would be fine as long as you didn't try to chew bubble gum at the same time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Tony, you do how many pages a week for Delilah Dirk? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> you had, you had emailed and you asked how I keep up this this schedule with Delilah Dirk, and uh, the secret is that it's already done. Um, the, uh, the the whole story that composes the Turkish Lieutenant is finished. And I put up four pages a week. Oh. That's oh. clever. Yeah, okay. Because I was going to say, man, because these pages are I, – I, I encourage people while you're listening, whether you are watching the stream live or listening to this after the fact, go to DeliladerK.com and look at these pages. There's no way anybody could be doing four to five pages a week and writing it as they go along and, and uh, achieving this quality. Especially not, especially not beside, beside a day job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. And I've, I, I've, done that, I, I've done that a couple times with um, uh, my flight stories, which were done sort of in the evening, <laughs> you know, after getting home from work. And that is a... Uh, uh, suboptimal, to say the least. <laughs> it's a polite way of saying it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty tough. It's a word associated with Jersey law. What's that? <laughs> suboptimal. <sighs> so, uh, but okay. So one of the things I wanted to get at real quick was just to spend a few minutes talking about building premises because one of the things I think is really really awesome about Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant, um, and I'm sure you could speak to this too, Paul. I mean, as a writer who has to come up with new stories, new situations, new premises, is you've got. You set up in the first couple pages of the story, the character's trapped, right? The Turkish lieutenant, Mr. Um, – how do you pronounce his name? Selim? Uh, Salim. Salim. I, think, I believe. <laughs> I've never had to actually pronounce it. I think it's pronounced Salim. But it's, it's – it's, It is now. Really, yes. He's the author. You know, yeah. we got to go along with it. Uh, oh, authorial – Intent? That's just silliness. <laughs> yes, the internet has removed author, uh, authorial intent. <laughs> just do what you want with it now, yeah. man. It's now, now the entire internet are are English literature professors. Yeah, you read Wikipedia lately? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> don't worry about what the author meant. Let me tell you what the author meant. Uh, Isn't that what every English 12 class is for? Yeah, that's exactly. Actually, yeah. Trying to figure out what the author meant? Yeah. Yeah, it takes me back to reading Virginia Woolf and, and having somebody explain what that impenetrable text was all about. Uh, so, okay, but, but premises. 
Like, you know, you get this great situation where, you know, Delilah Dirk shows up, she wrecks this guy's life, and then he's now indebted to her. He's driven by a sense of uh, honor or some kind of, you know, the obligation. Co- obligation. And she's even telling him, she's like, you don't have to come with me. Go home anytime you want. He's like, ah, I can't, you know. <laughs> they'll kill me. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll kill me, but also because, yeah, yeah, he can't go back home because they're going to kill me. But he, it, it, So you've trapped this guy into following along in this adventure. And now we get to watch whether or not he's going to cope and learn to like it or whether he's going to crack up and, you know, try to kill her. Uh, You know, setting up a premise, that's pretty tricky stuff, right? And I think trapping Mm -hmm. your characters is one great way to do it. I'm just wondering if you guys could share a few words on, like, how you you think about setting up premises for your stories to, like, drive drive the characters into the plot. Right. Uh, I will I will happily defer to Paul on this. He's probably got much more experience than I do. (laughs) Dang, um, nabbit, I was all excited when you started talking. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Tony's going to go first. Well, it's, I well, think... it, like, it's, it's a really intangible thing, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I, can, I can talk to you about, you know, drawing and drawing techniques because that's all something, you know, that's, you know, pencil to paper. It's very, it's much more tangible. Um, but, like, coming up with ideas and story things, at least, at least not yet. I haven't, I haven't figured out any sort of... Um, methodology or uh, well you know I'm not I'm, yeah I, I want to make sure that you guys understand I'm not asking for like oh let's do a writers 101 class where, where, where do you get our, our ideas from yeah <laughs> yeah hey, or, hey, or 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 just you, crap you guys <laughs> that, that was yeah that was last week no but like huh. not, not asking for a bullet pointed list of if you do this this and this then boom you got a story every time but I mean I'm just wondering if you could think express how you like any kind of like random observations you make in like what you think about when you're setting up a premise for your story because like the hard thing is like you start out with these characters and then you say okay well how am I going to get them to do anything in this story how am I going to push them into going into some place well, doesn't it doesn't it come from sort of um maybe you have a character you start off with a character you like perhaps um they have qualities that you like and maybe some other qualities that you, d- you don't like as much but you just think to, you think you know how can I put this character in as much trouble or or challenge this character as much as possible? I, well, and, and then and that is is kind of that that you were we were joking about the writing one hundred and one, but like the idea is like what do they want, and what's mm-hmm. stopping them from getting it? But I I I think yeah, you you run into the idea where you do a lot of times start out with the character. Um, you 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 just envision some cool you know character, and you go all right. Well, you know what's their world, and and hmm. you know and you sort of it it ends up being sort of organic because you know you've got the kind of character they are, um, and then and then this is the world they live in, and you know I, it's or you know sometimes you're sitting at a diner. Um, and as you're leaving, there's a big car wreck on major uh, road, and you run out and make sure that the people are okay, and um, then then like you. Uh oh, well, uh-oh, lost, lost Tony. Tony. Finish your thought though. Um, and and uh, and you you know check on everybody, make sure everybody's okay, and and then. You know, well, actually, or you you stop on your way out and of the the diner and tell them to call nine one one, and uh, and then you go and check on everybody and make sure everybody's okay, and then you go, hey, this would be a really good start to a story, <laughs> like, n- you know. I love how it has to be a calamity. Somebody gets to a car wreck. Okay, so go out and wash her some car wrecks. <laughs> I, you well, know, they say write what you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, some it. sometimes it's like you go, oh, there's this character, and it's you know, yeah. Uh, oh, this character is the 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 you know the son of these the mythological characters, and I'll do you know something. And sometimes you have some catastrophe happen right in front of you, and you go, uh, and and sickly you go, ooh, I could make a story out of that. <laughs> Let me ask you guys this. Okay, this is I, I, I want to close on this thought I want to, with this question. We're done already? Okay. No, 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 because we got another thing that we want, I want to spend some time on. Uh, you know, the show goes fast. Yeah, I know. Um, it's because you talk a lot. <laughs> I want to... <laughs> I wonder... <laughs> you got the guys in the production area laughing now. Uh, 
No, no, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so you said okay, you we're, almost we're like wrapping it up. No, no, yeah. you're, you're you're coldly looking at this this wreck, this car accident, and there's a part of you that's like sort of separated from the moment that says, "Hey, I should grab this and use it first. Do you guys find that you're doing that a lot when you, in daily life and also in like the entertainment you consume? Are you do you constantly have like this camera on in your head that's like collecting this stuff for potential story ideas, or is it something that is uh, a little bit more of like uh, it's happening under the radar for you? Uh, it's probably, <clears throat> I don't know, Paul, you, I mean, maybe, like, I was going to ask you, um, oh, lost my train of thought, too. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, well, I'll answer well, yes. No, Paul, I, Paul, I was going to, I was going to ask um, if, it, my experience seems to be in putting a story together is, is like a little bit like combining a puzzle or putting, mm -hmm. solving a puzzle. You know, sometimes you get... Um, elements you observe, sometimes you get um, elements you imagine, sometimes you get elements that come from, you know, historical research. Um, like is, I, and then I find it's sort of a process of putting it all together so that, uh, you know, it, is this why this show is going to be so long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it so can... that it all, it all, you know, you sort of, use the rules you've learned and your your inspiration and it all comes from all sorts of different spots together to hopefully form a cohesive whole mm. uh, a absolutely I, I i think that that is i mean it, it and yeah the, the jersey going back to kind of combining your sort of taking like those two pieces of puzzle that i got from tony and from you mm. is is that <laughs> You you know yeah you are you're, you're on almost all the time you don't even necessarily you don't necessarily notice it I mean okay. sometimes you're hit with the you know bolt of lightning and you go ah yeah yeah this is this hey something dramatic actually happened in the life of a sedentary writer perhaps <laughs> I shall use this someday you know uh, yeah, you but just, you you pull from everything right yeah like you can't I don't, not. I don't know if I'd say always uh, I mean per, my personal experience is not having to feel like always on but. There are certainly those things that stick out in your mind. Like maybe it's a small thing, maybe it's a large thing, but yeah. maybe it gets transformed into something else. Maybe, um, maybe you know, like just a word you pick up walking around or whatever. Yeah, uh, or a, a name you hear. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's yeah, like, uh, when it's I, like the grain of grain of sand in a uh, in a um, in the oyster. In an oyster. Yeah, hopefully it was the oyster. I, I'm not positive where you were going with that, but I was hoping it was the oyster. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I guys. think that when I say always on, I don't mean like actively searching. That's what I was trying to drive at. But but yeah, it's like you know we're geared towards building stories. I was, is is it like so? It's like a, like a muscle memory kind of thing, like a reflex that kicks in when it's. You needed. know what we are? What? We're we're lint brushes. Oh. We we roll over life, <laughs> and we can't help but pick things up. <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's good. That's almost t-shirt worthy. Write that. Right. Right. He came up with that <laughs> you, right here. Oh wow! You heard it here first, everybody. Yeah. At Comics are great land. Uh, so so it's you, not a Bronies versus Honies, but uh, yeah, before not, Honies, but yeah. Bronies versus Honies or Bronies before, before Honies was yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, Paul, but, are you all right if I put that on my business card? <laughs> Bronies before <laughs> Honies. <laughs> or oh, I was I'm thinking a, lint brush. Lint oh. brush. Uh, Human. Yes. Uh, intellectual lint brush. Now, okay, this yeah. is the segue into the next thing I want to talk about. Spend yeah. 15 minutes on this. Yeah. Um, so you guys talked about you're picking up things all the time. You guys both create stories that take place in very specific places and times. And I'm betting, I mean, especially looking at, again, I'm going to tell people, go to DelilahDirk.com. Go and, now. Yeah. Go if, now. If you're not reading this, there's something wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> either it's you're wrong for not knowing about it or you're wrong because you don't like it. Uh, you, you could just say you're either wrong or unfortunate, and now is your good good fortune to have been you guys, informed this, of it. The show is getting longer and longer. <laughs> so many minutes for me. Uh, but uh, so okay, you, you look at these scenes. Look at this. Look at the settings in this thing. Well, I wonder you don't if have I can to put show this on. The, I know. I should put, see if it, I can show it on the the. The internet camera here. Yep, looks uh, like you, you, I, you, I love the internet camera. Happens to be my camera, not your camera. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, there's like this really specific aqueduct, and I'm in the middle of one of the more awesome action sequences here. But uh, you know, very specific architecture. Also, very specific things being referred to in the story, like different kinds of tea. I, I'm guessing you didn't make up uh, what kinds of tea, uh, what elements were going into the teas that. Uh, Salim was making, right? Uh, so you got to do some research, I bet. I bet you both have done your share of research, and I'm wondering if you could share some thoughts on how you research for your stories, and then does this research inform anything about where you're going to go with your stories as you're doing it? Well, well, the very first thing you have to do is go down to your local library. 
Really? Your local <laughs> library is the repository for all that is good. Um, and uh, remember to support your local library in any way that you can. If you're lucky, maybe you'll find a delightful librarian who will be more than happy to find, help you find what you're looking for. It, and, and perhaps you might even marry a delightful librarian. <laughs> you keep wishing, Paul. Well, no, I think Are there you. any other type of librarian? I don't know that there is any other type of librarian. Oh, I point. love how we're turned listen to a PSA for the Ann Arbor District what? Library. You guys just secured my position here. Um, uh, thank but you. But no, it, I mean, I, I often do. I mean, I certainly do my share of ear, internet research, but I almost invariably find myself heading down to the library to get something tangible and... Definitive. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's – Wikipedia can help point the way, but you don't want to rely on it. Um, and, uh, you know, there are other internet sources, but, yeah, there's, uh, there's generally better, more solid, um, at least textual um, uh, uh, information um, at the library or, or, or the bookstore. Support your local bookstore too. Local bookstore, right. You don't have to go to Barnes & Noble. Go to, you yeah. know, like a mom and pop shop. Go to like Aunt Agatha's here in Ann Arbor. Yeah, there you go. Not very far from here. Absolutely. And uh, I know our, um, our local public library here in Vancouver, the main branch, has a special collections library, which among other things includes some 200-year-old books, mm -hmm. um, some books from the early and uh, uh, mid-19th century. And uh, you can hold them. You can flip through them. Uh, you, can you can't take them, them home. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but it, I... Um, I hit up a couple of those in the process of doing some of my research, and it's just, uh, I, it's an amazing ex experience to, you know, something that old and something that historied, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and actually being able to, to read something that was written while, during the period you were writing, as opposed to, mm -hmm. um, you know, third or fourth or fifth generation mm -hmm. you know, version of that. I have not been that fortunate with that because I cannot read old English for my Robin Hood books or uh, – and I don't believe that most of the mythology was actually written <laughs> you down mean, at the time. When, when you were writing the Hercules graphic novel, oh, uh, I, yeah, you I, could go back to the actual – see, he changed mugs again. <laughs> He's got he's got like a whole bunch of earlier on. Are they, uh, do they all have different kinds of tea? Is this how you came up with the whole, the character of the Turkish lieutenant? Is that you're a tea aficionado, and you're just like, you know, it's like it's like ringing bells. You know, yeah. they've got different tones and everything, and he's just like, oh, my palate needs this. Yeah, hey. guys, I there is only one mug. <laughs> I don't know what you guys keep talking about. <laughs> Oh man! There are four <laughs> mugs. <laughs> I was. I mean, meanwhile, I'm going directly to uh, the three amigos. I like this guy. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Was that El Guapo? Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> there's another mug my, on the screen. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what were you saying, Paul? Uh, so yeah, reading old English, or going yeah, back yeah. to like. So I I can't get to I I generally can't get to original sources. It's it's you know, I, it's beyond my capability at this time. Do you guys ever go to like but, museums and stuff to look at uh, like art made from that period or anything? I have not. You know, I just I, curious. I, I, I'm not saying that you had to. Yeah, you know, I was just like visual elements. That's kind of like the artist problem, isn't That's it? True. That's true. No, I I actually also try and research as much you know visual stuff as I can to send along too. But you know, sometimes it was funny because you you in your pre-show notes you you mentioned that we might talk about this. And I remember in particular, um, I asked for an incorrect haircut um, for my uh, book, uh, You the Great First Conquering the Floods. I asked for a what I thought of as a traditional Chinese haircut with the, with the queue, mm. um, the long braided queue. And um, they had um, experts, uh, uh, Graphic Universe, to talk to um, experts in the field, uh, um, professors, uh, university professors, and uh, said, oh, that's not the Han Dynasty. You're writing about the Han Dynasty, and that is a later – and I was like, oh, man, yeah, I feel yeah. so – I felt so bad. But that's a run, risky run with anything. Have you I, – those, I, those details, though, like haircuts and day-to-day -day stuff are the most difficult things to find research on and to, yeah. to learn about. Um, <clears throat> sorry? Oh, I was going to say, have you have you run into you know somebody finding like one 
like the one little little detail that you you <laughs> missed Cliff. by like a couple you just missed by a couple of couple of years or something it's like there, oh. oh oh listen there there are so many things if you knew how many things i just completely made up <laughs> and were like there are so many things that are historically inaccurate their their boat is what that's has, they didn't have flying boats oh <laughs> besides the fact that it flies its shape and styling is mid mid 20th century um but uh she's very advanced can i just say while i'm on here i th yep. think i have i think delilah dirk has the kindest and gentlest readers um Aww. the most generous readers ever because even when i get an email like i did get one email calling me out on the fact that the teacups are all wrong and they are uh <laughs> And uh, the gentleman who pointed it out was super nice in the way he said it. Wow. So, <laughs> um, Was he from Vancouver? <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, oh. He was not Canadian. I think he might have been Turkish. Uh, you <laughs> notice he wasn't American. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't from the United States. Yeah, yeah. He would have been like all, ah, what the heck's wrong with you? Man, we are a rude bunch, man. We just had Black Friday, and there's every year there's all those stories about all the brutalization that well, we do. Well, that's uh, people running over the guy who having a heart attack and the pepper spray lady. <sighs> It's humiliating. I just look at the rest of the world and go, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every year we do that. Doesn't it make you... Yeah, I, I look to the rest of the world and go, doesn't it make you feel better about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, I don't want to get... I don't want to speak yeah. too far off topic. So uh, we're, but, we're, okay, so... You guys, I was just going to say how nice all of the Americans I've met have been. Oh. I don't know where this... I don't know where this stereotype comes from. I spent a little time in L.A. and even in L.A. where everybody's supposed to be crazy and horrible. You spent a lot of time around cartoonists, didn't you? Um, just no, just random people. Everybody was really nice. Yeah, Damn. I was hoping he'd say. I, I went when we. I, I was I was in L.A. myself for about a year, like ten years ago or something like that. And oh yeah, people, about well, mm, two thousand three. Okay, yeah, I was I was like two thousand one ish, um, mm. but uh, yeah, it, I mean people were okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's that you know, it's nice to be nice to the nice. You know, and, and you're a nice guy, whereas, like, Jersey and I are kind of jerks. Yeah, so, abrasive, uh, acerbic, even. You know, oh, yeah. how about that? Uh, both, both abrasive and acerbic. Yeah, I uh, think. and cleansing, astringent. Uh, so <laughs> Cleansing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we, we make your bowels move. Yeah, like yeah, like all brand. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it's like <laughs> like like, like uh, colon blow from uh, Saturday Night Live. Okay, so let's talk about the historical details and in uh, doing your research. Uh, do you guys? Do you mention that you had an expert yep. at, at the publisher when you were working on You the Great? Uh, Tony, do you defer to any? Ex I mean, you're a deferential guy, but do you defer to any experts on the stuff? Do you show it to anybody? Um, <clears throat> I haven't been like when I when I first started off. Um, my the historical research that I had was very limited, almost like just limited to a few visual bits and pieces. And uh, I haven't had the fortune to encounter anybody, or well, I mean, I haven't been looking, but I haven't had the fortune to encounter anybody um, that I can sort of use, <laughs> not use, but <laughs> like you say, defer to, consult uh, with, yeah, consult with yeah. Uh, for historical matters, unfortunately. Uh, it, since I've started putting a website online, though, like I said, I met um, some people have been emailing me from Turkey and uh, and abroad, and I met quite a few people who I hope to be able to uh, consult in the future. I, I believe uh, they they prefer to be called a, a, a woman these days, not not abroad. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, wow! I see what yeah. Uh, what about what? About I, if it makes you if it makes you feel any better, though. If I didn't, if I didn't have a an expert foisted on me by the uh, by the uh, publisher, I probably would have gotten it wrong. Yeah, you would. Have I, got, you would have gotten some emails from abroad. I uh, yes. So, uh, uh, but I, I just. But then is that, is like is that so bad for some for a you know a detail to be wrong? In the end, it's your characters and your story that mm -hmm. carry you know ninety percent of the weight. So. I, I'm you, oh, here's oh. something, Paul. Actually, I wanted to I wanted to ask you about this. Is like you've worked on some franchises. I have. that um, that you stereotypically have uh, a following that would be a lot less understanding than somebody you know commenting on me getting some teacups wrong. Like how oh, do how do yeah. you? I I uh, I got nailed um, on I, I I did an issue of Justice League Unlimited, and. Um, they were uh, there were 
I, I was on a, one of the web boards that's very much devoted to – and I, I love, love the guys there. They're good folks. But um, I got a, got a lot of guff, very polite guff, but a lot of guff that, oh, the Huntress shouldn't even be on the team at this point. I'm like, ah, so I assume it was a point before the Huntress. Oh, but then she's wearing the wrong costume. Um, oh, well, then assume that, you know, there was a special uh, – I'm like – because I didn't, I didn't, and she's like, "Well, Supergirl's wearing the wrong costume to be if if the, if it's this time period, the costume Supergirl's wearing is wrong." And I'm like, "Wow, oh, you know, cut us some slack, man. <laughs> you know, it's it's impossible to match. You know, I I think they assume that because the cartoon was done by Warner Brothers and the comics by DC, that there's like this incredible synergy there." And nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, you you do have some people working on some of the cartoons who are also involved in comics, but it's you know you just you do your best to not contradict when you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I think I'm also fortunate though because I was working a lot on like the animated series stuff as opposed to the real DC Canonical. universe. Yeah, and um, so I didn't get as much guff. You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, they 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 will pounce. You know, oh, I had a, a a good friend of mine who was recently told that he wrote a character incorrectly, a character he had created. <laughs> oh wow! It was a character he had created over at Marvel, and somebody wrote him and said, "Oh, you're getting that character all wrong. You don't understand that character at all." <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, okay, that, that that's okay, kind of an edge case yeah, of of, but, of cartu- uh, you know comics fans. Yeah. But what what I think is interesting is what you guys are pointing at here is like maybe a sense of consistency kind of supersedes any kind of, like absolute technical accuracy. In, in the internal consistency of your story matters. I mean, um, uh, Three Musketeers is not entirely historically accurate, mm-hmm. but we don't care, right? Because it it's got a certain verisimilitude. And um, listen, all these five hundred dollar words. I love, I love week. that word. I love <laughs> that word um, because it's what I strive for. I I want the, it to feel right. At the risk of all sounding all Stephen Colbert, I want it to feel right more than be right. If because sometimes if you are exactly correct, it still feels wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and what you want is for the reader to get immersed in the world and get swept up. And it's unfortunate if, if some little detail bumps some of the readers out. So you try and be as accurate as you can. But ultimately, you, you have to make the internal consistency and you have to make it work for your story, not, you know, because, I mean, there are, there are people who can get every detail right and they aren't going to necessarily make a story anybody wants to read. Second part of that question that I had for you guys was, uh, how has doing this research, can you think of any instances where when you were po- pouring over this research, going to your local library, go, doing internet searches, where some, th- something went, ding, that's a great idea, I should use that in the story someplace. Has that ever helped your, your Oh, your, your absolutely. Work? How so? <clears throat> um, I was, uh, the prologue, if, if you're looking at Delilah Dirk, the, there's a prologue, and that was written um, actually after I'd reached or completed most of the story. Uh, and I was looking for a way to make Salim's life much more miserable um, right at the start. And I happened to be reading at the time um, a book about, well, about the, the time and the place. And, um, yeah, like just one of those elements, like, dropped right into my lap the, about the sultan having, I can't, fortunately, I can't remember the specifics right now, so I'm probably getting them all wrong, uh, about the sultan basically having... Um, I think uh, soldiers fight amongst each other for food. Right. Not necessarily um, as it's portrayed in the comic as a sort of source of entertainment, but um, but that was that was um, that was one of those situations where yeah, I was looking for something and I just happened to run across something in the history that uh, or in the research that would work perfectly. And um, and and that was a great that that was a great setup for. Um, when you know when he later just went, oh, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to kill you because this, yeah. this woman ticked me off. I mean, it just because you had, it established the Sultan's character so well. 
that you know that kind of person that he was. That so. Yeah, I, yeah, it established that yeah, he was he was a, a, a brutal man. Yeah, and it, like, hey, I know it would be fun. Let's put a big pile of money in the middle of the room and watch it and get all of our soldiers <laughs> to beat the living heck out of and, each and, other and to get call it, it payday. <laughs> 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 That's... And so then, it, yeah, it, it it does make him more. It makes it more credible when later on, after Delilah Dirk escapes, and he just turns to this poor hapless guard next to him, the Sultan does, and just. Junk. Yeah. <laughs> Knife through the, the torso, and then that's it. He's, that's just how he, he, yeah. ex- he exercises his demons. You know, it's like ah, I feel better. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what I mean when I say it's a violent uh, car- uh, comic. But it's it's a violent comic that I think is still accessible to young people. It's it's written in that kind of way that is, it's not glamorizing violence. I mean, it's making it a little slapsticky in places, but no more than say like Indiana Jones does or. Um, traditional old-timey comics, the old serials yeah. like well, Crimson Ghosts. Ghost. About it, I was going to say, if you think about it, Star Wars had didn't have a, a G rating. Yeah, and everybody's and, and, getting and, all sorts of body and, parts and, cut and, off. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's the kind of thing that we didn't used to flinch about. Uh, um, <laughs> I was talking with, um, I, I teach a lot of comics classes, and I had a 14-year-old kid who just saw The Goonies for the uh. first time. <laughs> and he said, he said, boy, you know, 80s movies sure are weird. And I'm like, why is that? He's like, there was so much swearing and so much violence. He's like, everybody's getting shot. And he's like, that movie was for kids? Everybody says terrible words of that. And I was like, yeah, now that I think about it, that would not fly today. That would be a, a rated PG-13 or yeah. R movie nowadays. Yeah. Is there a lot of swearing in the Goonies? I don't I remember that. I, I think one of, didn't, wasn't it one of the characters kept, wasn't it like uh, the, the, the stocky kid? Chunk. 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 I, one of, I thought it was Chunk. He, he should didn't get he, an Academy Award uh, he, retrospectively for that performance. But in that does, movie. didn't he? Doesn't he occasionally like slip? Oh, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's actually pretty constant. It's. Uh, is it all of them though, or is uh, it just him? It, it's it's more concentrated around um, Chunk and then um, Corey Feldman's character Mouth. They yeah. they both have the foulest mouths of all of them. But all the characters, even uh, Data, the kid who played Short Round in uh, Temple of Doom, uh, he even even he drops a few bombs here and there. So. Well, yeah, when, and uh. and and. What kind of bombs are they, though? S bombs. Uh, I, I don't think there's any F words. No, I don't think so. I don't think there's any F words, but still, yeah, still, you know. Uh, anyway. Jersey, can you be more specific? I don't understand. <laughs> there's a, you know, there are a lot of words that begin with F. I don't even use those words in real life, not much less on, on a podcast. <laughs> not true. <laughs> he doesn't use them for more. <laughs> what? <laughs> another, oh, mug? another mug. Another <laughs> mug. <laughs> okay. Well, we got Sharon Iverson showing up in a few minutes, so I'm gonna have to eject Paul. Uh, oh, pull the trap door lever. And, and Sharon, I think, is going to rightly scold me when she gets a chance because I, I think I have not sent some information to her that I was supposed to mm-hmm. for for my visitation here in in March. I do. So. I do want to give you guys a chance to uh, share any final thoughts, anything else, else that you want to plug, and you want to make a mention of. You get to be any place. You get to. See, you were just at a signing. You do any more of these signings? Um, I, I don't have any uh, new signings lined up yet. Um, I do want to remind folks that um, local artist Jake Miner and myself are working on uh, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle for Moonstone. Cool. Um, and uh, that is Jake's doing gorgeous work on that, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing that sometime early next year. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, and, uh, keep in mind that, that Muse is, uh, out in stores in December. Uh, it's a four issue miniseries, uh, should be coming out monthly because mm-hmm. it's all done. Um, again, that, that whole, like, if you have it done, then it can come out smoothly and flawlessly. True. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking also of done, uh, Comixology, weren't they, aren't they selling some of your books? Uh, um, they digitally? have, um, the they, Andorian they Star have, Trek story you did was, yeah, that was on sale for 99 cents. Crazy. Is it, is it still on sale? I, I'm not sure. IDW It's a good book it. anyway, and it's about I, the yeah. best Star Trek aliens. So. It, exactly. Exactly. Um, plus, Comixology also has uh, Gotham Girls, ah. uh, which is the only place you can find Gotham Girls. Do you get a royalty on that? that? I Probably eventually. <laughs> if if more, more people that uh, more people that pick it up, the more people. I've read it, people. There's some snappy dialogue in there. there. Whoa, look at that. I said something nice. <laughs> oh, nice. And uh, also my issue of Batman Beyond, uh, uh-huh. issue 23. Uh, which uh, was my first published DC work, but I thought was really good. Um, uh, I really enjoyed doing that one. Excellent art by um, by Craig Russo on that. Um, and uh, yeah, there are a couple other things uh, up on Comicsology by me as well. So just go to Comicsology.com. It's Eric typed it into the chat and do a search for Paul's story. S T O R 
R I E. You don't even need my first name. No. Nope. Trust me, I'm the only story on <laughs> yeah. Comicsology. And Storyville on Twitter. Storyville on Twitter. And Storyville.com. And Storyville. I don't even send people to my <laughs> blog anymore. I'm, I'm thinking about deactivating it. The only comments I got on my blog anymore <laughs> over on, are, are like spam comments for like from post three months before. Oh, so. really? Nobody goes and says, hey, I love seeing you on Comics Are Great? Yeah, well, you know, I very <laughs> seldom blog about that. I put that up on Twitter. Or I, Because I, I don't blog about anything anymore. Because I have Twitter and I have Facebook and I have Google+. Plus. You're dead to me. You don't even blog about your appearances after the show. All right. Well, so I, <laughs> Sharon's here, so Paul um, Paul could go. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go while Tony talks well, about the, I, the I, stuff that he has coming up, and and we'll bring you back to say goodbye to Tony when we're done recording. Awesome. But, but, but it, I, it's a pleasure meeting you, Tony. And actually, well, a pleasure to meet you too, Paul. And also, I have to ask that Transformers poster in the background where you're sitting, Tony. Is that there all the time? <laughs> um, no, it's not. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, hold on. That's giving you the false impression. Um, I have had that poster for most of my life at this point, wow. and uh, it was going to be in here at some point. I just uh, used the opportunity as an excuse to get it up. Oh well, that was very thoughtful of you, and, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's 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 actually it's it's. Uh... You know, thrilling for me to know that such a talented artist is also uh, one of the gentle, beautiful people who like Transformers. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, anything that you wanted to throw out a, a shout out for? Anything that you got coming up that's exciting? Uh, visit DelilahDirk.com, D E L I L A H, Dirk.com. Um, the book, the first part of the, or the first half of the story is out in French right now. So if you're in France and you'd like to read it in French, you can get that in paper form over there. Uh, second half comes out in January. Um, but for me, uh, that's it right now. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. Run that by me again. Did you say this is coming out in print soon? Uh, it's coming out in French. Why not in French. English? Um, give me time. <laughs> give me time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to get back to you on that when that is a uh, when that is a thing. Let, let let me know because then yeah I can I can talk to Sharon Iverson about getting it added to the library's collection. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey Sharon. Hey. How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah. So we, we got a lot of things to talk about. We got some events coming up that we need to make some noise about, and then we got some. I see you brought some books. A couple. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So. Um, first of all, this coming Sunday, December 4th, we have from 1 to 3, you, along with Ryan Estrada. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you guys are going to present? As I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> we know that it goes a little bit spontaneously, but... Yeah, yeah. Ryan and I are going to talk a little bit about the Google Plus and Twitter and, and how Ryan managed to become one of the most influential people on Google Plus in, over the course of the first couple months of it being... Uh, going, uh, and and how he has leveraged it uh, in his own career to uh, get lots and lots and lots of readers of his comic. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a lot of that. A lot of be like like use cases of these different social media outlets. Which ones work for which audiences? Which ones work which way? Like also Tumblr and things like that. So yes, that's one to three p.m. Uh, December fourth at the downtown, downtown library multi-purpose multi room. Yeah. So thank you for uh, getting Ryan in on such short notice because it was I, I totally yeah. I, I blindsided you at no. the, the last comics artist forum. You were like, oh, Jersey's going to be talking in our next forum, and I was like, hey, we should get Ryan. He's yeah. right here. Yep, yep. And no, you're like, okay, we'll make no. It that's fine. He's not in the country that often, so yeah. got to grab him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I want to ask you. Um, there's something special coming up at Mallets Creek where I work most of the time. A special exhibit. Yeah. Starting December 17th and I, running I, through January 30th. I don't know why you guys are so good to me. But, yes, uh, <laughs> you uh, graciously invited me and my wife, Anne, to have an exhibition of our work, our comics work. And uh, I, I was crossing my fingers when I passed the title over the table to everybody, and I just decided to call it Comics with an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, okay, sure. And yeah. so, yeah, that's going to be on uh, display. That's, um, well, man, the, the URL. It's at AADL.org on the right. events listing. Right, so. and, and we're looking forward to it because we've been talking about doing some kind of comics exhibit for a long, long time. So I'm glad you guys are going to be like first. Yeah, that's super so, cool. Yeah. Really excited about it. So th thank you guys for that. But and then also yeah. one more event that I wanted to point people at, uh, and, and you're invited, Sharon, uh, Make the Comics, December 8th at Ruse Roast Coffee Works on, uh -huh. off of Industrial on Rosewood. Uh, there's a Facebook event listing that I will link to in the show notes. Uh, I'm sure Eric's already posting it in there. 
Um, oh yeah, Eric's on top of all this stuff. Man, he's so awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but yes, uh, so that uh, December eighth from five to eight p.m. Uh, we're gonna have a comics get together, uh, drink and draw with coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sounds cool. Might not have as many mugs <laughs> as, as, as Tony has, <laughs> but Roots Roast Coffee is some of the best coffee in town. I don't want to make it sound too much like a commercial, but there's a reason I went with them because their coffee is excellent yeah. uh, if you're a caffeine addict like me. But it'd be a chance for you, Sharon, mm-hmm. to uh, gather up a few more cartoonists, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Um, just want to put a word out there a little early, but on January 8th from 1 to 3, we'll have our first Skype guest artist at Comics Artists Forum. Oh, well, that's right. And that's Rob Stenzinger out of Minnesota. Rob so. Stenzinger of ArtGeekZoo.com mm-hmm. will be our guest speaker. Tony, you wouldn't be interested in doing a guest speaking uh, event uh, for the Comics Artists Forum or teaching some of your coloring techniques? Uh, I do not know anything about what you are talking about, but I will be happy to <laughs> discuss that further. Yes. Cool. Cool. Because I, I don't know if you've seen his stuff, Sharon, but Tony's coloring is oh, exquisite. Wow. It's, oh, he's painting with light, and he's doing an amazing job mm. of it. But, um, yeah, I think if you could do a, a demo over Skype for our kids on how to co- how you paint in Photoshop, that'd be super, super cool. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll talk about it. Too. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Uh, so what else you got for us? Oh, I just brought a couple books along. You know, the Muppet movie came out over the weekend. We it's super popular. Yeah. And so I have Muppet Sherlock Holmes, well, which right there. So came out. Came. Oops. It there came out this, um, I think it was in March. And it is a delightful um, read with Gonzo as Sherlock and Fozzie as his sidekick, Dr. Watson, and Kermit as Inspector Lestrade or whatever his name is. And... Um, the humor is there totally. Um, it's delightful. There's four different mysteries that they're involved and they all seem unrelated, but as you can imagine, certain other characters from the Muppets, Miss Piggy, et cetera, keep making little appearances. And Mm. so you begin to pull strings together. This wouldn't happen to be by Roger Langridge, would it? I'm sorry to pull it off the um, camera. It is. Let me, I wrote it down. It is by Patrick Stork. Yeah, yeah. Amy Meberson, Meberson did the art. Yeah, and David Peterson did the cover. So, ah, and we know David. There's our from Michigan connection. Michigan connection. Um, I also brought one that is from a series of books, and this one came out this year as a second book. Um, these are both kid books. Um, Super Diaper Baby. <laughs> to the invasion of the potty snatchers and dave pilkey is a guy i've heard about since way back he won a a writing written and illustrated contest back in kansas city where i used to live years decades ago um and so i've kind of followed him and he's done the famous captain underpants but his stuff is just kind of natural for graphic novels and so he did his first Diaper Baby in 2002. This one is his second, and um, it is um, a shift for the two authors, George Beard and Harold Hutchins, who have been told by their evil principal that they've got to get off the poop kick. Um, and so they decide, and they think and think and think, and their new theme is P. <laughs> and, um, you know, slight change there, but there's an evil guy who turns into this puddle of pee and wreaks <laughs> havoc all over the city. So, that was worth it just so I could hear you talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's fun. So a couple books there that are fun. In the library's collection. Yep. We'll link to them in the yep. show notes. Uh, well, awesome. Well, thanks for those, Sharon. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, any last things that you wanted to make some noise about that's been going on at the library besides all the awesome events that we got going on? All the awesome events. You're going to be on in two weeks, right? When we got Dave Roman and Raina Telgemeier on. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to get them to talk about their trip to France. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to brush up on my French. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nothing to you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yes. Okay. Well, that'd be cool. Uh, we're we're at the the bottom of the hour, so mm-hmm. I'll I'll wrap up. And so Sharon, uh, you're at aadl.org. Still haven't convinced you to get on the Google Pluses yet. I gotta get there. Ryan, yes. Ryan and I are gonna do that at the yep. forum on oh. December fourth. So <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're gonna set up your account live. Thank That's you. What we'll oh. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just sound thrilled. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
But you can find Sharon at AADL.org. She's often working at Mallet's Creek if you want to get some great graphic novel advice if you're in the area. So, and then, uh, you know, I want to thank Paul Story again of Storyville.com mm-hmm. for being on the show. Tony Cliff, gosh, this was so much fun. I would love to have you back sometime. I'm oh. thinking getting you and Jake Parker and Dave Roman for uh, a, a three-man roundtable on a subject I think would be super fun. Oh, man, I will come back anytime. I feel like there's so many things we did not get to touch on. I know. It went, it went too fast. It went way too fast. So You know, some people have three-hour podcasts. <sighs> I, I, you know, if it were up to me, I would, I would, I would eat, happily go more than an hour. But uh, since Ann Arbor District Library is pumping money and resources <laughs> into this show, I, I do have a, a clock to watch. I have to defer to them. I have, I have to be a little Canadian myself sometimes, and be deferential <laughs> to to my to my uh, my surroundings. But um, but no, seriously, that was that was great, and I would love to have you on again to talk more about this because yeah, there's a lot of places we could go with this discussion. But in the meantime, my pleasure. <laughs> in the meantime, everybody should be visiting uh, DelilahDirk.com. It's an amazing, amazing comic, and uh, Thank and thanks for stopping by to talk with us about it. So, oh, and you can follow you on Twitter at. Do you prefer that people follow Delilah Dirk or? Uh, if you would like updates on Delilah Dirk, if you'd like to know when the latest uh, update is up, um, that's at Delilah Dirk, and uh, my personal account is at Tango Charlie. TC. So, uh, okay, well, thanks everybody for downloading and watching. This will be uh, broadcast live again next week at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time at, uh, out of comicsagreat.tv. And it's collect- this episode will be collected as a podcast, an audio and video show at comicsagreat.com slash CAG39. And until next time, I've been Jersey Droz of comicsagreat.com and Jersey-, Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye. <laughs>